Happy Sunday, everybody. Steve here. So I did something a little different this Sunday with the uh, thumbnail that was uh, Veruca from the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And I just was thinking about that picture when I was kind of putting this together this morning. And uh, we just we just think it's, you know, funny in that movie with Veruca who's, you know, I want it now, which I think is kind of... Um, Apropos to uh, to what I'm going to talk about today, the Lord can put this on my heart. Um, so I want to talk about putting God to the test and 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 how what that that kind of means to me in these days and 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 in my life and 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 how I don't I don't want to do that. I want to kind of talk about that. So it it all kind of starts. Right now, I'm going to work backwards in time. So, you know, the first time, I mean, everybody remembers or, or thinks about this is when Jesus was being tempted by Satan. And the devil took him and, you know, you turn these stones to bread, all these things. And the last thing, he took him up to the highest point of the temple. And he took him up there and he said, you're the son of God. He said, throw yourself down for it is written, the angels... Uh, scripture covered up here. He will command his angels concerning you and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. And it basically, it, it, in this situation, Jesus was saying that you, putting the Lord to the, to the test in this, this situation was basically don't back God into a corner. And don't don't put him into a place where he's got to use a miracle to save you, and and that it's wrong to do that. And um, I think a lot about um, look. I mean, different strokes for different folks. But I, I mean, my thoughts on it is it's kind of like some of the the folks that with the, the handle and the snakes. At some churches do this, and I, I never understood that. Of course, they're referring to the fact of you know, uh, you know, snakes will bite you and it won't hurt you. Of course, there was the, the time Paul, they were shipwrecked on an island and he was building a fire and a snake came out and bit him on the hand and he just kind of shook the snake off in the fire and everybody's sitting back waiting for him to die and he didn't because God healed him and protected him. But, you know, Paul didn't walk over and pick the snake up and snick it on his, on his hand to show them. And... In, in this case, Jesus stepping off the temple and, and falling and forcing God's hand like that. So I'm peeling this back a little bit more. And of course, you know, the, the verse that Jesus references there is from Deuteronomy 6, um, chapter 6, verse 16. Do not put the Lord your God to the test as you did at Massa. And... Of course, this is Moses writing in Deuteronomy talking about the time, hey, you remember back when you guys did this, don't, don't do that like you did back there. So taking one more step back here, looking at Exodus chapter 17. So here's the thing. This is what I'd never, I could never get my mind around growing up all the, the times I've read the Bible is, is I mean, just imagine if, if, you know, you're watching all the plagues and everything befall Egypt and you're an Israelite, you're watching all of this happen and, and God parting the, 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 the Red Sea, all of these things, time after time after time, God did these things. And they, so in verse 17, the whole Israelite community set out from the desert of sin, traveling from place to place as the Lord commanded. They camped at Ref, Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. So they quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. I want it now. So I can imagine them saying, <laughs> Baruch, stand there. <laughs> Moses replied, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you put the Lord to the test? But the people were thirsty for water there, and they grumbled against Moses. They said, why did you bring us up out of Egypt to make us and our children and livestock die of thirst? And... Yeah, so I'm, I'm reading this, and I'm just trying to to, to put myself in, in that 
where where that was and watch that and in context and I just I kind of imagined you know you know the people there and you know I try I try to imagine that like like they 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 were running out of water they they didn't see any possibility of of water around there's no rivers or anything else of where they were and you know they 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 couldn't see any help they're like well yeah you know god did all that but what about now and instead of going you know god is faithful and he didn't bring us out here to die god is faithful and just to save us and trusting in him he's going to deliver us in, in his good time it's like well we want this now we want this we want to see we want to you know and they were putting god to the test like you know you need to show us now or you know so i could believe you and and demanding a, a test basically and and jesus talked a lot about that with the with the pharisees and they demanded a sign and jesus knew it's like and and, and honestly you know you know the 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 Part of us goes, well, why didn't he just show us the sun? And then they would have been like, oh, and then everything would have been great. Well, they wouldn't have, I don't think. I think, I mean, like if you're the Israelite, like I said, and you see all these plagues and everything else, why would they then in the desert in, in, at Rephidim there, why would, they, why would they get angry and doubt God, that God could save them like he had miraculously time and time and time again? And Jesus knew, you know, it's a, it's a wicked generation that demands a sign because it, it, it is really, it's like, okay, well, yeah, okay, you showed me a sign there, but what about this? What about this? And to keep demanding signs like that, and uh, I think about that. What was the one, uh, was it Gideon, who was there at the threshing floor, and, the, and an angel came and said, you're going to save, you're going to deliver Israel. And he said, well, okay, well, you know, can you give me a sign? And, and, you know, it was, it was, okay, lay out this, this sheep's wool and in the morning, let the wool, you know, I, I get mixed up as it wool was wet and the ground was dry. And then, and then he wanted to see it the other way around. Like, okay, well, let, you know, let me see the other thing now. And so what I'm kind of getting at, I mean, what's a modern day equivalent of that? And you know, a couple of things, you know, if we've ever said this, you know, well, I'll, I'll believe God if I get this, if I get this job. If I'm asking God for this, and if I get it, then, okay, I know he's looking out for me. Hmm. You know, it, it basically, if we don't get what we think we deserve, if we don't get the support from God that we think we should get, then, you know, it, it rocks our faith. And, and, and we're like, well, okay, then, then, you know, God must not care about me or whatever, or I'm, I'm angry at God because he, he didn't give me what I thought I deserved. And, I, you know, I, I was reading through a lot of, you know, different commentaries and what people think, and I'm just kind of re researching this. And again, trying to wrap my mind about this. So you guys are on a journey with me to see, you know, what do I believe as I'm, peeling this back and and you know faith faith takes risks you know faith is is stepping out like what's what's the scene from uh uh the indiana jones movie the third one the last crusade right when he's he's reading about you know only uh with all the different tests to try to get to the holy grail and one of them was you know only a leap of faith and you know sometimes you take that leap of faith you take that step out you know not knowing how God's going to get you through this, but you know that he will. Maybe it's not the way that you want, but he will. So Hebrews uh, 11, verse 1. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. And if the Israelites, I like to think, I was there that I would have that kind of faith that, that I would be there and go, I don't see any water. I don't see any way of getting water, but God has brought us here so far and I know he's going to get us through this, right? And 
you know, I just I, I, I think about that, and it it again it it comes back to your heart. It comes back to that childlike faith. It comes back to God has been there for me. I, and, and the older I get, the more clear it is to me, time and time and time again. I look back and I go, well, this is kind of what I was hoping would happen, but it didn't. But then through the benefit of time, as I look and see, and he delivered me in a, in a, in a way or, or brought me through something or, or brought me into a place that I never would have imagined. And that's that, that childlike faith that, that, that he's going to get us through that. He's going to deliver us. He's going to bring us there. And it may not be the way we think we deserve or, or what we want. You know, it may not be what we want now, but he does every time. And, and trusting that and believing that and believing he's going to do that. So um, anyway, that always gets me. And uh, so I hope you have a great Sunday and uh, that this was a blessing for you as it was for me. And uh, we'll see you next time. Take care.